I want to welcome Director Shalanda Young, Director of Office Management and Budget. Ms. Young, thank you for being here. I've enjoyed working with you. You uh, uh, are one of the most likable people uh, on Capitol Hill and in my experience in politics, and, and kudos to you. So as I've said before, I like you a lot, but I don't like the President's budget, and I'm going to, I'm going to outline that uh, with uh, respect but uh, probably some sharp criticism. So, um, but I appreciate your service to our country uh, as a, a former staff person here on Capitol Hill and now as uh, in this very important job as the director of OMB. So welcome back to Capitol Hill and thank you for your time this morning. I'm gonna yield such time as I may consume for an opening statement. You just thought that was my opening statement. But uh, so I'm not gonna, I'm not going to read my statement. I just want to talk to you. I want to talk to my colleagues. I want to talk to the American people. Um, the, the president says, and I wholeheartedly agree with him, uh, that budgets are more than just numbers on a ledger. They are a statement of values. They are a vision for this country. They are a set of policies. Um, and so when he says, show me your budget, I'll show you your values, I agree. I just say it a little differently. Show me your budget, and I'll show you your beliefs. And I'm not going to question his motives or your motives about uh, your beliefs and your values and the policies outlined in the budget. I'm simply going to say that there's not a clearer or starker contrast between the president's beliefs and the beliefs of at least the folks, Republicans, who serve with me on the Budget Committee. And so what the beliefs I'm talking about are the beliefs in the role of government in the lives of its citizens, the role uh, of government in solving the problems of our country, uh, beliefs in where we are, the conditions we're living in, and the cause and effect of the policies of this president over the last few years. And beliefs, quite frankly, in what the president thinks the American people think about the last three years and the policies and the outcomes and the current conditions that people are living with. I've, the better way to say that is, if the president's gonna double down on the last three years, I gotta give him credit and I mean this with, with all respect, he puts it on paper and he continues to stay committed to his beliefs on the policies that he has advanced over the last three years. Now, I would say it's disconnected from the American people and their reality and their needs and their desire for a different direction. I think it's disconnected from the pain that they're feeling, especially when it comes to their pocketbook and, um, and the inf record inflation, the interest, the, the payments on their home, the payments on their car, the payments on the, we've got more consumer debt than we've ever had. We've got more credit card debt than we've ever had. People are taking more money out of their 401k than they ever have. I mean, it's a crisis. I know we all have a view of, of what's a crisis. And I hear a lot about the climate crisis from my Democrat colleagues. The folks in West Texas, and I can, I, I grant you, I don't, I don't travel as much around the country as I do my own district, but my folks uh, are, would say that, that the biggest crisis right now is the safety and security of their families because of the policies at the border and the flow of crime and criminals and drugs that threaten their neighborhoods, their families, and their friends, and their fellow citizens. And they would say their pocketbook and the cost of living, the groceries, the gas, their, their quality of lives. And that's why I think the American people, when you look at the polls and approval, and I don't put a lot of stock in, in polls, but I think it's representative of, of our citizenry saying, we want something wholly different. So here are some things I've taken away from the beliefs. Um, this budget suggests that the president and those who support the president believe that we should expand entitlements 
when we haven't even paid for the two most important, in my opinion, Social Security, Medicare, they're going to be insolvent, but we're creating more. Um, we have more people trapped, in my opinion, on dependency in the government than we've ever had because we don't have real consideration for work-capable people going back to work who receive assistance. And so we expand Medicaid, for example, I say we, the president, without consideration for the kind of work requirements that he supported when he was senator. There's an expansion of Obamacare subsidies to people that are making $400,000, even $600,000 because you all repeal basically the eligibility. And the studies showed during the IRA uh, or during the temporary ex expansion of Obamacare that more than half the people on there were above the 400% poverty level. So it's, you suggest, and the president suggests in the budget that he's going to use somehow the IRA drug price control savings, which was 100 billion last time, it'd be expanded to 200 billion in savings, that you're gonna use that somehow to shore up Medicare. That's a, listen, we ought to work together to shore up Medicare, no question. And kudos, I guess, to the president for at least outlining a way to do that. He grabs for a tax hike of about 750 billion and then this savings from the drug price control. I disagree with that strategy and that policy, but nevertheless, that's what's articulated. But here's my question. Why should we believe the president's going to do use those savings when the last time through the IRA, there were savings in Medicare that were used to subsidize green energy tax giveaways? It didn't go back into Medicare and shore it up. So you're saying things in this budget that in practice haven't been followed. Let me be clear. There are things that, the, that Republicans have said that we haven't followed on, up on. And we got a piece of paper that's very different in terms of our beliefs. I guess you could go back to the biblical admonition, show me the fruit of your works. Faith is dead and belief is dead without works. And let me tell you, there's as much deficiency on following through with our uh, balanced budget as, as some of the criticism I'm levying on you and the president. You, you understand? I'm trying to be an equal opportunity uh, a criticizer. Now, our budget's different. We don't leave 16 trillion or 17 trillion or 18 trillion in debt. We take that off over the next 10 years to balance. Y'all raise taxes $5 trillion at a time when our economy's teetering on recession, where a lot of those taxes would be passed in higher expenses to people, the exacerbating inflation. We don't use taxes. We try to reinvest and reignite growth through tax reform and regulatory reform, trade. So there are two different worlds, two different belief systems. And what I think I would summarize to say in closing is my Democrat colleagues and this president believe in more government and more spending and more taxing as the answers to the problems that our country faces. And I think that very strongly that our belief system articulated in our budget suggests that we believe in less government, less spending, less taxes, more empowerment of the American people, more freedom for a better quality of life, for prosperity that will raise all boats, that will give, that will create the greatest anti-poverty program ever known to man, which is more jobs, more opportunities, higher paychecks, better quality of life and standard of living. Now, that's my perspective. I think, I think those uh, two worldviews, those two belief systems are as clear to the American people as you can get. And like I said, I respect that the president is, he's staying, not just staying with the horse that he's been riding on, he is galloping at a pace that we haven't seen yet, which is, uh, which I think will end in even greater disaster than what we've been experiencing. With that, I know I've gone over my time, but I'll let you have as much time as you may consume for the ranking members' opening comments. Thank you, Mr.